Er du ny her? Ja. Skal jeg vise deg noe? Hva da? The Innocence is a film about children, childhood, and it asks the question whether children can be truly evil. It deals with a group of children spending a summer in a small Norwegian town. As they play, they discover that they have these supernatural abilities. <laughs> but they're just kids, and they don't understand that there's anything special to them. So they use these powers, and when they quarrel amongst themselves, they actually cause some really bad things to happen. It gives us a glimpse into the world of children, which has become inaccessible to us grown-ups. So when we spoke about this film initially with Eskil, the director, we were unanimous that we don't want a traditional horror film score. Actually, this is not really a horror film to begin with, and we don't want the audience to read this film as a horror film. So we wanted a totally different type of mood. We investigated the possibility of having themes for the characters and tried them out, but it felt corny somehow and didn't fit the style of this picture. There is a main theme to this film though, but it's only played twice, once in the opening credits and once in the end credits. And the rest of the music is sort of texture based. Maybe Nordic art house horror thriller is a pretty new genre, so there was new territory to explore. And the question then was, what kind of music should this type of film have? And what sort of approach should we take? I started thinking about the world of children and my first experiments were with trying to investigate really pure sounds like sine waves and some theremin and things like that. But that sounded a bit like, like early 70s science fiction film and didn't really fit this realistic contemporary style. Eskil said he wanted this sort of mystical and feeling of wonder to find the pure world of the children tainted by the baggage we carry as grown-ups. It became clear that I need to have a sort of a bank of sounds to begin with. So I blew a big chunk of the budget in the beginning in string recordings. We recorded a day with a small string orchestra and I built a bank of sounds from those recordings. I had some pieces written which resembled actual music, but we also played a lot of long tones with various colors, textures, chords, and I even had this graphic score piece which isn't conventional notation at all, but which had players improvise to generate material for me to use. So, like, each one of you picks a circle. A circle closer to the center means a lower voice. A circle further from the center means a higher voice. Then you start following your circle with your eyes. So that one cycle of the circle takes about a minute. Then you observe these colors and you modify your note according to what those colors tell you to do. Luckily this gamble paid off and those sounds became the cornerstone of this entire soundtrack. I came to think that if the music is from the viewpoint of us as grown-ups from the audience, should we take the sort of innocent music and then corrupt it somehow, make it tainted by our adulthood? So I took the idea of first recording real live acoustic instruments and then mangling and processing those sounds to make them sort of dirtier in time. I've worked with Bessie for 20 years years almost and before this film this kind of soundscape that we have been creating is more this kind of towards kind of classic film soundtrack or classic you know, classical music type of sound but for this one we did something totally different so the idea was to process the sounds such a way that you almost can't figure out what the sound source was Typically, when you record a string ensemble, you go far away from the players and in, in a large hall. But for this, we wanted to hear every single little nias from the ensemble, and we recorded each musician 
with their own microphone. So basically you could hear every kind of little sound when the bow hits the string and you get this very claustrophobic and very raw sound. We use acoustic instruments as sound source, but then Pesic did lots of processing for the sound during his composition phase. And then in the mix phase, we kind of continued from there. Kind of having the instruments that are familiar to the listener, but we tried to dissolve the sound source so that they couldn't recognize what the instruments were in the first place. Well, the whole concept of the sound was to start with something pure, and then the sound itself grows old, like we've grown old as viewers. And I found that if you record something to a tape and play it back half speed, it gives this sort of whimsical and nostalgic sound to almost anything. So that was the initial source for my experiments. When searching for inspiration, I stumbled upon the music of Mika Kallio, who is an experimental drummer and percussionist. I fell in love with his set of gongs and the way he played them, and I intuitively thought that this might be a useful sound for this film as well. When I tried these gongs with the picture, it became quickly evident that the gongs fit perfectly the sound and world of the character Ben and the way he uses his magical powers. Since this was a remote collaboration, they were working in Norway, I was in Helsinki. We mainly just sent files back and forth. So I figured the best idea was for me to write a lot of demos and then Eskil and the editor could try them out while they were editing the film. I think I made like five hours of demos all together for Eskil to play with. In the middle of all this, COVID happened and the whole deadline of the film was postponed. So they took a lot more time with the edit. Towards the end, I got back all the experiments which Eskil had done with the editor, and I sort of backtracked their process and rewrote everything with the final cut of the picture. In the end, we hear the opening theme once again, but this time it's purer and more clear, like a dark spirit has been lifted and we, as the audience, have been transported back into that childlike state. 